Hey guys, Zot here. With Phase 1 being well underway and Phase 2 bringing the much awaited honor system, PvP is going to be taking the forefront for most people. And with the abundance of PvE pre raid bis lists already out there, there just isn't any information for PvP pre raid bis gear. So, welcome to exactly that. We cover stat priority and then what pieces of gear you should be looking to obtain, along with where and how you get them. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at Warriors. Warriors alone are not the strongest of classes. They struggle with connecting to their target and also with maintaining uptime. Not to mention things like mages and priests with their shields make it impossible for you to deal any damage because you're not able to generate any rage. But pair a warrior up with a healer able to keep them alive and to assist them with connecting to their target and warriors quickly become a one man wrecking crew. Before we get into gear however, let's take a more in depth look at what stats you should be prioritising as a warrior when it comes to player versus player, as often your gear and also stat priorities differ greatly from what you would normally take for PvE. For this video we're going to be assuming you're going to be running the standard 31 20 0 spec and playing with a two handed weapon of course, as for PvP right now arms is just far superior. Ok so stat priority is going to look like this, now simply knowing your stat priority is one thing, but knowing why you take these stats is what helps you be able to easily decide what gear you want going forward in terms of upgrades. Alright so as we can see our number one priority is of course going to be that 5% hit cap. Reaching this cap will mean all of your abilities are going to hit on a level 60 target. This is your number one priority for obvious reasons. You don't want to lose a 1v1 because you miss your execute on that mage you finally got uptime on. Now we've got stamina. Stamina is extremely important for being able to stay alive and in classic the best defence stat by miles, a small health pull and you're just going to get one shot by everybody and die too quick regardless of the amount of damage you can deal, as Warrior is always going to be in the thick of it when it comes to team fights. Every point of stamina you get equates to 10 hit points. Next is Critical Strike. Now this is king for warriors. Critical Strike means double the rage on melee swings resulting in you then obviously being able to spend more rage. On top of that Critical Strikes also proc your deep wounds. Following that is Strength. Strength gives you attack power at the rate of 1 strength equating to 2 attack power. Attack power just then flat out increases your damage and you'll often find an abundance on your gear. As a warrior strength is your primary damage stat. Following strength we've got agility. Now agility for warrior is insane, but quite hard to come by unless you're sacrificing other things like armour. 20 agility is going to reward you with 1% critical strike, which as we know is going to be our number one stat as a warrior after your hit rating, when it comes to damage. And for our final stat worth mentioning it's going to be attack power. Now we know this is already just going to give you flat out extra DPS, but why this is so low on the list is because strength is just better and in higher values a lot of the time on your gear, but attack power loses a little more value in PvP compared to PvE, simply because warriors struggle for uptime and crit and agility will just make you a lot more bursty, which is far superior when it comes to PvP situations. Alright so with all of that in mind let's take a look at the best in slot gear you can get right now for PvP. Bear in mind this is pre raid phase 1.5 gear, so includes all of the dungeons including the newly released Dire Maul, but to remain up to date with this list be sure to hit that subscribe button. Starting from the top and working our way down we're first going to start with Mask of the Unforgiven. Despite this helm being leather, there just isn't nothing that can compare to it early game. 2% hit is absolutely huge for a pre raid item, and on top of that, you've also got that 1% critical strike and even 12 stamina. In terms of itemization, this helmet is just insane, so at the drawback of a little armor, you're going to be at 2 out of our 5% for your hit cap off one singular item. Now, to get this mask, it's going to be off to Strathholm, and it's very easy to farm. 
The Mask of the Unforgiven is a drop from the boss adequately named The Unforgiven, and is one of the first bosses you can reach with both the undead side and the living side, but just requires a little detour. You can actually find groups farming just for this item quite often, as you can clear up to the boss in about two pulls. In this guide we're going to be also including the best of the best, items that might cost a lot and be out of many people's price ranges, but it's abyss list and these items are for sure worth splurging out on in preparation for phase 2. So with that in mind, our alternative helm is going to be the Lionheart helm. If you're main warrior, you'll probably have this on your wish list, as not only is it insane for PvP, it's best in slot when it comes to PvE also. 18 strength, 2% critical strike and even 2% hit. Lionheart Helm is made by Armorsmiths with its materials costing upwards of 1k gold, plus finding a person to craft it can also cost a hefty fee. The materials include 80 Forian Bars, 12 Arcanite Bars, 40 Wicked Claws, 10 Blue Sapphires and 4 Azerothian Diamonds. Moving down, we've got Amulet up next, and for this we're going to be recommending the Ember Fury Talisman. Now, despite the spirit, this item has a large portion of stamina, and despite that, the main reason we're going to be picking this up is going to be that critical strike. The fire resistance is also meh, but can come in handy in some situations. Coming from the 10-man dungeon Upper Blackrock Spire, it drops from the first boss Pyroguard Embassy at about 11% drop rate. Despite that, groups for UBRS are quite easy to find, as many people are after rare drops from both Rend and Jet, so if you have any intention of PvE, you'll also benefit from UBRS. Next up, we've got Shoulders. Now for this, we're going to be using part of a set, which is the Valor set. For this bis list, we're going to be including the Shoulders, Braces and Boots. Now this set provides you with a very high amount of both stamina and strength, but also an abundance of agility on every single piece. As we're picking up 3 pieces of the Valor set, we're also gain 2 armour from the set bonus, helping boost our defences against physical damage dealers. Now these are all from different places, with the shoulders coming from Upper Blackrock Spire's infamous Rend Blackhand, where after a small event you'll be able to take down his dragon Gif and then slay Rend himself, whereas the braces are bind on equip trash drop from the Blackrock Spire. These however are very cheap on the auction house, so if you don't get lucky from trash, spend a few gold to purchase them and save yourself some time. And finally the boots are from the first boss inside of the Scholomance dungeon, the gargoyle Kirtonos the Herald, who you can summon by placing the blood atop of the brazier. Now, next up we've got Cloak, and for this it's going to be the Stone Skin Gargoyle Cape. 7 strength, 8 agility and a whopping 14 stamina. This cloak has some amazing stats, but obtaining it isn't going to be easy. This cloak drops from a rare boss inside of Strathholm, on the undead side of the instance. He's a gargoyle named Stone Spine. You can find him patrolling throughout the dungeon, and once you find him, he has about a 35% chance to drop this cloak. Up next is chess piece. For this, there is really no other option, and despite it being male, is one of the best pre-raid items in the game for both PvP and PvE. I'm of course talking about the Savage Gladiator's Chain. 13 strength, 14 agility and 13 stamina combined with a huge 2% crit chance. This is without a doubt as good as it gets for chest pieces pre-raid. Now to obtain this chest you're going to have to head to the Blackrock Depths, as it's a rare drop from one of the bosses in the Ring of Law, known as the Arena, where you have the opportunity to beat one of 6 mini bosses. The boss you're going to be after is Gorosh the Dervish. Now this is actually not as hard as it sounds to farm, as reaching the arena takes only a few minutes, and you can pair up with a healer and 2 man farm it until you can get your chest. Also a worthwhile mention is going to be the breastplate of the chromatic flight. For PvP this chest if you get lucky enough to get the carapace is going to even outshine the gladiator's chain vest. Not only is it also plate, but the raw stats provided make this chest your best in slot, but don't count on getting it easily. Next up on the list is going to be gloves. 
for this, we're going to be wanting to get Reaver's Claws. These gloves provide you with a 9 strength bonus and a huge 15 stamina, and also our much wanted extra critical strike chance. Reaver's Claws drop from the final boss in Lower Blackrock Spire, which is Overlord Rimfalak. Whilst a better, but again more expensive option is going to be the Stronghold Gauntlets. 12 stamina, 1% parry, and 1% critical strike. So good stats, and even the added bonus of the being immune to disarm, making them very strong when it comes to PvP. But as mentioned, these don't come at a cheap price. With the materials consisting of 15 Arcanite bars, 20 enchanted Thorium bars, 10 Essence of Earth, and 4 blue sapphires and large opals. Bow is going to be next on the agenda, and for this it's going to be the Brigham Girdle, a huge amount of both strength and also stamina. This bow is insane, but more importantly what it brings is the 1% hit chance, raising this gear set to now 3% out of the 5% required for hit cap in PvP. This bow, like a few other items on this list, is from the upper Blackrock Spire, but this bow is coming from the final boss, General Drakisaf. And for our final piece of armor, we're going to be looking at legs. Now for this, we're going to be picking up the recently added in patch 1.5, Aldrich Reinforced Leg Plates. These legs have it all, critical strike chance, large amounts of both strength and stamina, and even some added agility on top of that. To get a pair for yourself is going to be of course off to Diamond, where they drop from the final boss in the West Quarter, Prince Torfaldrin. Now there are a pair of leg plates even better than the Aldrich reinforced ones, and those are Cloudkeeper leg plates, but these are by no means cheap. They're a high level world bind on equip drop, and as they're not targetable to farm, you're going to have to purchase them from the auction house for a very pricey fee. But honestly, they're not all that much better than the cheaper option, but this is Abyss list after all. Moving swiftly on, it's going to be rings next. For your first ring, it's probably Abyss for every melee in both PvE and PvP. Of course, I'm talking about the Blackstone ring. Stamina, attack power, and hit all on one ring. What more could you ask for? This ring, for its level and how easy it is to obtain, makes it a must have. As you could probably have guessed from reading trade chat on your realm, this ring drops from the final boss in Muradon, named Princess. Muradon is a lower level dungeon and can be easily soloed by hunters, warlocks and even priests. So if you didn't get this whilst leveling, you can easily purchase it for a small fee in trade chat. Our second ring is Band of the Ogre King, 14 strength, 13 stamina. Huge bonus to two of our strongest stats, what more could you really ask for? Band of the Ogre King drops inside the newly added Diamond North, dropping at the end of the instance from King Gordok, at about a 15% chance. With that in mind however, if you have the extra funds, a great upgrade from the Band of the Ogre King is Mimradon Signet. This however is a BOE world drop epic, so can set you back a lot of gold. Up next we've got Weapon. Warriors are extremely weapon dependent, and for a weapon you'll want high base damages. This is down to most of your abilities dealing damage dependent on the percent base damage that your weapon has. So slow weapons with high base damage are going to be perfect for PvP, and Demon Shear is exactly that. High base damage, slow speed, and even an extra damage proc with quite high rate doing some added damage and also a little healing. This incredible sword drops from the final boss in Strathholm Livingside, the Dreadlord Bowsanar. And if you've got the funds, this probably comes as no surprise, but the best weapon pre-raid you can get is hands down going to be the famed Arcanite Reaper. What sets this apart from Demon Shear despite the same DPS is not only the higher top end, but also the added stamina and even the attack power. But yeah, Arcanite Reaper is one of the most expensive items in game, costing a ridiculous 20 Arcanite bars, 6 enchanted leather, and 2 dense grinding stones. Also, if you do manage to get your own Arcanite Reaper, don't forget to swap from sword specialization to axe. Before we get into trinkets, the last slot is going to be your ranged weapon. For this, we recommend picking up Satyr's Bow. This bow is perfect. Free agility, 1% hit, and on top of that, it's relatively fast. So, great for pushback, and a much better alternative to its sister crossbow, the Black Crow, solely due to that speed. 
Now to pick up your very own Satyr's bow, you're going to have to venture into Dire Mall, where this bow drops off the second boss on the east side, Zevrim Thornhoof. Our last items on this list is going to be our trinket slots. Now trinkets on Classic are a little different. There is no best in slot trinkets for PvP. Instead, there is trinkets that are best for certain situations, and you should accommodate that by having a wide array of trinkets at your disposal. As these trinkets often have a very long cooldown, it's good to swap depending on what trinket is on cooldown. Some examples are Tidal Charm, Nifty Stopwatch providing unrivaled utility, whilst being an engineer allows you to have a ton of gadgets, including Netomatic, Battle Chicken and all of the Reflectors. With all of that in mind however, there are two trinkets for warriors that are good in every single situation, and those are Black Hand's Breadth and of course Hand of Justice. Alright then guys, that wraps up our pre-raid PvP best in slot gear for phase 1.5 for Arms Warrior. Now we're going to be keeping these up to date with the phases, so make sure to check back once phase 2 hits for an updated best in slot list. And as always, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more up-to-date content.